Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today starts another reading vlog, so stay tuned. So it is Monday, August 10th, which means we're in like the first or the second full week of the Newt's Magical Readathon. And today I managed to get a couple of books completed, so I am happy to like check those off because if you watched last week's vlog you know I only completed three books and I need to complete on average like six books a week in order to get everything read this month that I need or yeah this month that I need to get read so last week I completed Little Women The Sea of Monsters or Sea of Monsters and uh, You Should See Me in a Crown two of those three completed newts and then today i completed the other westmore by westmore with xander and this did my a in arithmetic which is read a non-fiction i think i would give this five stars i really really enjoyed it uh this was about two different men named westmore one grew up to be a uh, Rhodes Scholar, decorated veteran, White House fellow, and business leader, while the other ended up a convicted murderer serving a life sentence. They were both just a couple of years in age. They were both black men that grew up just blocks away from each other in Baltimore, Maryland, and had very similar childhoods. Both grew up without a father, and both had trouble with the law and just all kinds of stuff and it's told uh from like alternating back and forth between the two s's and how their lives kind of followed along the same path to a certain point and then where they veered off and it's really all about the support that they each had and the decisions that were made and it was just really really good and I was reading this out loud with Xander and he enjoyed it I think maybe some of this resonated with him as well on making good choices and how some choices can just really really screw up your life and early on in the book like we were in the first chapter or two I think it was in the second chapter. Xander got so upset by something that the other Westmore did. And he was just like, no. No, he, he made me stop reading. He's like, I don't want you to read anymore. He's like, I know he's about to do something really stupid. And um, he just, he didn't want to hear it. <laughs> but I think this really resonated a lot with him on making good choices. And I really hope he carries some of this stuff with him. So that is one more newts that I have down. And this week, because I didn't get my six last week done, this week I really need to try to like aim for nine books. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but I'm gonna try. So here's for book number one. And then on the way home, Marty and I, let me put this cover back on. Well. Marty and I continued listening to A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell, and this was to replace uh, Two Way Street by Lauren Barnholt. I DNF'd this. I got like 20 pages into it and decided I really just don't like it. Um, and this, that was supposed to be my... Uh, Bethsheeta Babylon, an author with a first or last name that starts with the B, uh, which is my A in Ancient Runes. But I replaced it with this, uh, A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell. And this is, well, it kind of follows the story of two moms. You know, they're best friends, uh, their sons are best friends, they're like five or six years old, they go to school together, and Oftentimes they do favors for each other like picking up the other one's kid from school and Stephanie is a like a mom blogger and Emily is 
some kind of is in, in the fashion industry i think she works for a magazine or something like that and stephanie's a widow emily complains about her husband doesn't you know treat her the greatest makes her feel dumb things like that and they you know kind of find this like common motherhood bond with each other and one day emily asks stephanie hey can you pick up my son Nikki after school and I'll be back to pick him up by like nine o'clock and then nine o'clock comes and goes and Emily doesn't come and the next day comes and goes and Emily still hasn't contacted her and Stephanie's freaking out because she knows her friend would never do anything like that because you know she knows her friend's this really good mom and really cares for her son and checks up on her son often and so her not calling or anything was really freaking stephanie out so stephanie starts contacting her work and they say something like she's away on business and stephanie's like did she tell me this and i somehow misunderstood something um a few days go past she still hasn't heard anything she contacts Emily's husband who's out of the country in London and he said that she's away on business and okay still seems weird but Stephanie kind of accepts it until Emily's husband returns to the country and she's still missing and I can't really go into anything more than that without spoilers but it was really good. I think I would give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. I haven't listened to any more of Storm and Fury. If you didn't catch before, I'm re-listening to Storm and Fury because I want to read Rage and Ruin. And it's been kind of too long since I've read the two, like read the first one. So I want to reread that in order to read the second one. And I think I have a little less than two hours left on that audiobook. So hopefully that shouldn't be too difficult to uh, get through soon. I've also continued reading A Small World by Tabitha King. And I'm currently on page 134 of this. It's kind of a slow read. It's kind of a weird read. It's mostly following these two characters. Uh, Dolly Hardesky or something like that. She was the daughter of a former president who got himself in trouble for like thieving and stuff. And she was sort of a famous daughter, grew up in the White House, but now she's like much older. She's, you know, like a grandmother age. And she's obsessed with this dollhouse that she was given while she was a kid in the White House, but didn't really appreciate it until she was an adult. And it's like a replica of the White House. And she's obsessed with like miniatures and things like that. And then you have Roger Tinker, who he's sort of a crazy scientist guy. And he's come up with this contraption that can help Dolly get the things that she wants very realistic. And it's now gotten to where they're finding ways for Dolly to seek revenge against some people who have who Dolly believes have wronged her. It's it's weird. Also, if you didn't know, Tabitha King. Let me just read you. Here is this tiny little about the author. It says, Tabitha King lives in Maine and is the wife of the best-selling author Stephen King. Small World is her first novel. And I actually have other um, Tabitha King books. I don't know where I got them. I'm, I think somebody gave them to me. But it's funny because I didn't realize that she was Stephen King's wife. But it is... Well, it's late. I'm about to go to bed. We spent the day driving, and then shortly after getting home, I had to go to Xander's school for his freshman orientation because he starts high school this week, like literally the day after tomorrow. So we're like also trying to adjust schedule. So I have to get up at like 5.45 in the morning. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to go sleep, and I will talk to you tomorrow.
I have got some packages, oh my goodness, to show you guys. And, oh, and I've gotten some reading done. So I finished listening to Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This was a reread for me. I was listening to it quickly in order to uh, get to Rage and Ruin. I really enjoyed rereading this again. I can't remember what I rate, rated it last time. I'm guessing it was either a 4 or 4.5, maybe even a 5 the first time I read it. Uh, I think it was a 5. Uh, but it was definitely a 5 star again. I really, really enjoyed it. And I've started Rage and Ruin. I'm currently on page 49 of this, so just getting started. And uh, well, I'm listening to the audiobook of this as well. I, I found it on Hoopla. And if you don't know what Storm and Fury is about, it's about this girl named Trinity who lives with a group of wardens. And wardens are like gargoyle shapeshifters and they kind of protect humankind from demons and well Trinity's not just a normal human girl she's something special and I absolutely love this and I tell people if they're fans of like the mortal instruments and sh the whole shadow hunter world then I think they'll really like this I very much enjoyed this and I, like I said, jumped right into Rage and Ruin, which is the sequel. But now I have all of these packages to show you and I'm excited. So this first one is actually, I don't know if it's an art or finished copy, but the author reached out uh, and asked if she could send this to me. And I thought it sounded really good. I thought it sounded like something Marty and I would both enjoy. Uh, reading so I thought well normally Marty and I we do like audiobooks together but I thought I could just maybe read this out loud to him or I'll read it and then pass it on to him we'll see okay so this is definitely not a finished copy it's got not for resale all over it I can't remember when it comes out oh it comes out I think in October and I will link all of the information down for this book. And I think she sent me some like little promotional pictures. So I'll put those up here as well. But let me just tell you what it says on the back. This is Sentience by Courtney P. Hunter. Who can you trust if you can't trust yourself? And I thought this sounded really, really good. It says, running from a violent past, Leo Knox desperately decides to participate in a scientific experiment conducted by the infamous and greedy tech giant Algorithm OS. Soon, Leo learns that she has agreed to take part in a Turing test, a test that measures the ability of artificial intelligence to, to blend in among humanity. But what she doesn't know is that the test set to take place is unlike any other of its kind. Leo enters Eden, the contained preserve where the test will occur with 23 others. While everyone appears to be human, four of the individuals are indistinguishably advanced form of humanoid AI. The task is simple. Identify the AI while trying to survive. The twist, the four AI are completely unaware of their nature, causing every participant to question what they know as reality. The group embarks on a journey within the preserve, rigged with obstacles devised by the controllers of the experiment to elicit human response and emotion. Quickly, madness ensues and divides form, partnering Leo up with Avery Ford, a marine who wears his demons on his sleeve. Romance falls together for the two as the world around them falls apart, revealing the links people will go to protect those they love, to achieve monetary gain, or to simply survive. Back at Algorithm OS, the story unfolds on the screens of Nathan Ames, a scientist responsible for monitoring the experiment's surveillance cameras. Nathan studies the humans involved as they wrestle with where they stand on the polarizing issue of AI and its applications. He watches the AI unknowingly fight to prove their humanity, just to leave the experiment unscathed. All the while, Nathan is intimately aware of his company's plan to weaponize or commodify the AI should they pass the test, and he must reconcile this with the chaos that plays out before him. And it compared to like 
Hunger Games meets, I can't remember what it said, but I thought it sounded really, really interesting. And so I'm looking forward to giving this a try. And it's only 294 pages. Granted, you know, the text is small and all of that, but yeah, I think it'll be fine. And then uh, Green Kids Craft sent me another box. So let me, I don't have anything to cut this tape. I just pulled it up. Okay, there we go. I opened it upside down. Okay, there we go. So this one is a botany lab. So it comes with a little magazine here and everything to do a whole bunch of experiments or projects. This has six projects in it. It has plant food experiment, leaning the light experiment, botanist kit, plant press, herbarium, and plant printmaking. And there's also like a little information. I think there are extra projects in here as well that you can do. Like, yeah, reuse your box for flower dissection. There's like a little hidden pictures thing here. Edible flowers, work, uh, careers for kids, books about flowers and all that. It's very cool. Now, sometimes these boxes are on the young side for Xander and we end up just taking them to Mobile and giving them to my little nephews and they very much enjoy them. Uh, but this is all of the stuff you need for these projects. This is the Botany Collections and Experiments. Looks like we got some beans in here. We got different cups. I think these are for like growing stuff in. Then we have I don't know what all's in here. We got some cardboard, looks like some paper, some paint, some colors, paintbrush and a rubber band. And then there's like a little poster that you can put these little sticker badges on. And so each month you get a little badge. This one's a botany expert. And it's just got like a little, it's not gonna focus. There we go. It's got little daffodils and stuff on it. I'll see if Xander's interested in this one, but I think it may be a little on the younger side for him. But my nephews will absolutely love it. And then I got an Amazon package, which I believe is some books that I ordered. Okay, this one is uh, Trials of Apollo Book 4, The Tyrant's Tomb. They had these brand new for like $9 on Amazon, which I thought was an amazing deal. And uh, when I went to McKay's last, I think it was last week. Yeah. Um, they were like $11 used at McKay's. So Amazon was a lot better deal. With the exception of like the one hardcover I bought. Because for some reason it was only $4. Okay, this one now. Okay, there's a couple in this box. So we have uh, Percy Jackson, The Demigod Files by Rick Riordan. It's very small. And we have Magnus Chase and the Gods of As Asgard, Nine from the Nine Worlds. This is a very pretty cover. And Trials of Apollo, book three, The Burning Maze. And then the last Amazon box here. Here we go. These are the rest of the Rick Riordan books that I ordered because this like completes my whole collection, I believe. So we have Demigods and Magicians, Percy and Annabeth Meet the Canes, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Hammer of Thor, The Trials of Apollo, Book 2, The Dark Prophecy, and Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, book three, The Ship of the Dead. So these are all the Amazon books. And then I also got my Once Upon a Young Adult Book Club box. So opening this one up, there's worms everywhere. Okay, let me uncover this. If you don't know what the Once Upon a Book Club box is about, you get um, a book and 
as you're reading through the book, you get to certain pages in the book that say open your gift for page whatever. And then you go in the box and you find the gift with that page number on it and you open it up and it's something to go along with the story. It makes the book very interactive and I absolutely love it. I think this is one of the coolest boxes ever. And let's see, for this one, our book is Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. Pretty book cover. And ooh, it's white. It's got this little foil bench on it. Okay, so it looks like it's told in like text messages as well as regular uh, story. Oh, here's one that says open your gift. It's, down, it's a little small one, so it's down at the bottom there. Uh, let me see what else I can find. Here's the normal size. It's like a little post-it note. It just says open your gift. And then you know, we have our gift. So this one's like for page 351. This one's for page 284. This one's for page 7. Oh, we have a signed book plate by the author. And a print that says, if not today, when will you get another chance? And that's from the book. Oh, page 94. And this is the August box. And there's a meet the author like on Instagram live on August 20th from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And they also have a Facebook group with like discussion dates and they talk about these things. Uh, they also do on Instagram and Facebook uh, opening the gifts on certain days. I also do like a, I only do these when I'm going to do it in a vlog. So I, as I'm reading the book, I open the gifts and show them to you. Let's see, here's our letter from the author. It says, Dear Reader, I'm so delighted that today, tonight, tomorrow is Once Upon a Book Club's July YA selection. It's actually their August, but okay. The book takes place over 24 hours on the last day of senior year and follows academic rivals Rowan and Neil, who think they despise each other when, of course, the opposite is true. Rowan wants to write romance novels, a dream she hides because people in her life have been quick to judge in the past, and she has no idea she's living inside one. I've always loved romantic comedies. The enemies to lover is my particular brand of catnip. I live for the moment when one person realizes the other isn't nearly as bad as they originally thought. And wait, maybe they actually understand you in a way no one else does. And their freckles are also kind of beautiful. Well, the, while this book is a romantic comedy, Rowan and Neil are also grappling with big questions about their futures and their identities. They're both Jewish they, and they confront anti-Semitism in a way that sadly feels more timely than ever. At first I was afraid to put it on the page because of how personal it felt, especially having grown up in a community without many other Jews. But for me, writing has always been about excavating the uncomfortable. Rom-coms give us a familiar framework to explore those difficult topics with a guarantee of a happily ever after. Today, Tonight, Tomorrow is also a love letter to Seattle. I'm a huge fan of books where the setting is a character, and I tried to capture all the best and weirdest parts of the city I call home. It's Rowan's home too, but it's a bit the but that's about to change. I wanted to linger in that end of high school nostalgia and uncertainty while allowing hope to peek through. As Rowan notes in a later chapter, the things that matter to us for the past four years will shift and evolve, and I imagine they'll keep doing that forever. It's terrifying. This is a book of lasts, even as Rowan and Neil's relationship is experiencing some of its most exhilarating firsts. I hope you enjoy this little piece of Seattle, my ode to romance, rom-coms, and all the times you're dying for the two leads to just mash their faces together already. But because they know it'll be worth it, they're going to make you wait a little bit longer. Happy reading, Rachel Lynn Solon. Okay, this sounds so cute, and I'm very, very excited to read it. Okay, so now I'm going to go and clean up this mess, and I need to get dinner started. So, I'll talk to you later. So, yesterday was like a really busy day, and I didn't get it 
chance to check in. I spent the day like doing some serious like house cleaning and sorting and unpacking things still because yes, we've been in this house for over a year and we're still not unpacked. We just kind of have boxes shoved in places. <laughs> so I was sorting through some of those boxes and also we have like all these boxes of stuff for yard sale that we need to do at some point. I was doing a lot of rearranging, a lot of cleaning, and I was exhausted by the time I finished all that, and so I didn't check in. But I was listening to an audiobook the entire time, and I finished Rage and Ruin, uh, which is the sequel to Storm and Fury, and I give this five stars as well. I love it. This series is so good. Oh my gosh. And, well, I already talked about what Storm and Fury is about, so I can't really say anything about this one, uh, except that, well, like I said before, if you're fans of the Mortal Instruments, you'll like this. Also, I think if you're, <laughs> if you're a Buffy fan, you'll like this as well, and also if you're a fan of, like, good versus evil, heaven versus hell, You'll be a fan of this as well. So good. Five stars. I can't wait to continue this series. It's probably going to be like another year before I get to... I don't even know what the next book's called. Or when it's supposed to come out. But it's probably going to be a while. And then when I finished that, um, I found on Hoopla, Frozen by Melissa De La Cruz and Michael Johnston. And I actually got to page 82 of this. It almost looks like not quite a third of the way through it, which is crazy. Uh, this is about a world where I think war is what did it. There was like bombings and all kinds of stuff. And now the world is like this sub-zero frozen place. And our main character, she lives in New Vegas, which I think is the same as the original Las Vegas, but it's frozen over. Instead of money, they have things like heat credits. Uh, water is like super expensive. They have artificial stuff that you can have that has like nutrients in it as well as mood stabilizers to keep people in line. Um, but one of the other things is that when all of this happened, the only people like that remained really uh they all have like brown eyes or maybe not brown eyes they have brown eyes and other like certain other colors of eyes but then other eye colors like blue eyes um these people that were born with blue eyes as well as some of the others i can't remember which ones they have special abilities like being able to control people uh as mind or um, different things like that and they just get like executed um, in public so our main character she is one of these people that has an ability she wears uh, special lenses to hide the color of her eyes she works in the casino as a blackjack dealer and like right in the beginning uh, like the police type people they come in and they find people that um, have this eye color and then they just shoot them right there. It's crazy. And our main character, she wants to go to this um, kind of a mythical place referred to as the blue where the sun still shines and it's warm and it's just paradise. And she comes into possession of a supposed map that everybody wants that can lead to this blue and hire some essentially like some pirate guys to help her out and that's where I'm at in the story. I'm actually really enjoying it. Uh, somebody told me they didn't think I would like it but so far I'm, I am actually enjoying it. So today I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done. Oh I did read a tiny bit more of Small World. Uh, not a whole lot like I don't even think I finished another chapter because I sat down last night and started reading. But I was so tired I couldn't stay awake. Um, but yeah, I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done today because I have a video to edit. 
so I'll be focusing on that. But if I do get anything red, I will check in with you later. So it's like f almost 4.30 in the afternoon and today has been a very busy day. Uh, Xander needed to get his room clean and he couldn't do it last night because he was just so tired. So he went to bed super early. So we got up super early this morning. We got up at like 5.30 this morning and by 6 o'clock him and I were working on his room. <laughs> we worked on it until like 11 o'clock this morning and then uh, we ended up having lunch and everything and he wanted to go and spend the night at a friend's house. This friend, however, is at his mom's for the weekend and his mom lives 45 minutes away. Yeah. But before I drove him there, uh, which I did, before I drove him there, I took him and he got a new haircut. So I thought I would show you guys his extreme hair makeover. I filmed the whole thing. So let's go to that. I'm just like, I can't handle it. <laughs> so he decided to do a junior ROTC in school this year and they have to have a military haircut for it. And he was okay with it. He was like, yeah, let's do it. And cut off all the hair. Yeah, it was something like seeing him without all that hair. I'm not used to it. But after that, I took him to his friend's house and I drove home and during that time I got quite a good bit of audiobook listened to. Uh, I'm still listening to Frozen by Melissa Dela Cruz and Michael Johnson. Yeah or Johnston. And I managed to get to page 235 so I only have like this much left but I don't know that I'm gonna get this finished today because I have to upload my video that I edited yesterday and our plans for today were going to be um, we were going to try again and do this inflatable obstacle course thing uh, at the park, but um, the weather is not good today, so we're postponing that until tomorrow. And so the video that I was going to edit tomorrow, I need to work on tonight. So that's what I'm about to do. Let me grab my other book. Hold on. I have read more of Small World by Tabitha King, and I'm on page... 212 of this so i also only have like this little much left i think it's like a, a little over 100 pages oh exactly 100 pages left of this 
So don't know when I'm going to finish that one either. <laughs> I'm really hoping to get both of those finished by tomorrow. We'll see. And I got some packages in the mail. Uh, I believe these are from a giveaway that I won uh, that uh, Riveted was hosting. I'm super, super excited for this. So from the author of Five Feet Apart, uh, Mickey Daltrey and Rachel Lippincott, we have All This Time. Isn't this cover just so pretty? This comes out September 2020. And this says, Kyle and Kimberly are the perfect couple. At least that's what Kyle always thought. But when Kimberly drops a bomb on their relationship on the night of their graduation party, Kyle's entire world upends, literally. Their car crashes, and when he awakes, he has a brain injury. Kimberly is dead, and no one in his life could possibly understand. Until Marley. Marley is suffering from her own loss, a loss she thinks was her fault. And when Marley's and Kyle's paths cross, Kyle sees in Marley all the unspoken things he's feeling. But as Kyle and Marley's feelings for each other grow, Kyle can't shake the sense that he's heading for another crashing moment that will blow up his life right as he started to put it back together and he's right this sounds like it's gonna be really interesting oh and it's short too only 320 pages and then in this one okay make sure my address is covered i think there should be two in this one because i won three books no only one so I guess there's still one more to come. So this one is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. And this comes out November 2020. And this says, the year is 1926 and Shanghai homes to the tune of debauchery. A blood feud between two gangs runs the street red, numbing the city to its chaos. At the heart of it all is 18-year-old Juliet Kelly, or Kai, a former flapper who has returned to assume her role as the proud heir of the Scarlet Gang, a network of criminals far above the law. Their only rivals in power are the White Flowers, who have fought the Scarlets for generations, and behind every move is their heir, Roma Montagov, who was Juliet's first love and first betrayal. But when gangsters on both sides start clawing their own throats out, the people start to whisper of a contagion, a madness, of a monster in the shadows. As the deaths stack up, Juliet and Roma must set their guns and grudges aside and work together. For if they can't stop this mayhem, then there will be no city left for them for either to rule. This is thick, too. 439 pages. Okay, I just checked the email, and yes, there was one other book that I won, but it does say to please allow three to four weeks for shipping, and these came separate, so I'm guessing that one's going to come later, maybe in my next vlog. But I'm really excited, especially for this one. This one sounds really interesting, too. And hey, it's got a dragon on the cover, though I'm currently reading my dragon on the cover one. <laughs> but yay! Okay. Oh, and Xander gave me a book yesterday. So apparently, this was one he got last school year. And he, because he got some books for me last year. And I guess this is one he forgot to give me. Uh, but he asked me yesterday if I wanted it. And I was like, yeah. It's The Misadventures of Benjamin Bartholomew Piff. Uh, you Wish by Jason Lethko. And this sounds super cute. It says, uh, rules for birthday wishing. One, the wish must be made with the eyes closed. Two, every candle on the birthday cake must be blown out in one breath. Coughing, sputtering, or spitting out the candles doesn't count. Three, the wish must never, ever be spoken aloud. Orphan Benjamin Bartholomew Piff closed his eyes, blew out the candle, and wished with all his might. Soon after, sirens wailed all over the Wishworks factory. Ben had followed every rule of birthday wishing to a T and had made the most dangerous wish of all, a wish for unlimited wishes. Ben is delighted with his clever wish until he learns that he has disrupted the fragile balance in the magical realm of wishes and curses. 
Before long, Ben has been recruited by the Wishworks Factory president himself to fight the evil henchmen of the Curseworks Factory, giving new credence to the old adage, be careful what you wish for. And I think this sounds super, super cute. And there's also uh, some art throughout it. Xander asked if I wanted to read it with him. I think it's going to be cute. We're going to have fun reading that. And I don't expect to get really any more reading done today. So I probably won't check in with you again until tomorrow. So my plans yesterday and today kind of shifted around a little bit. When I last left you, I said that I was going to uh, upload a video and then spend the rest of the evening editing because today we had we were going to do the whole inflatable obstacle course water thing. Um, but then yesterday I ended up spending like, I don't know, like four hours rearranging and planning out my filming, editing, uploading schedule. I've literally, I think, got my videos planned for the next year. Um, yeah, I kind of got a little carried away with that. But then um, I uploaded my video and at this point things changed with tomorrow or today's plan um, and we weren't going to be doing the uh, inflatable obstacle course thing and instead Xander was going to go with his friend. They apparently have a boat and they were going to go out on the lake and do that. And so Xander was gone all night last night and then all day today. Uh, literally just got him home and it's like nine o'clock at night. But uh, when I also was rearranging my schedule, I changed when I needed to edit that video. So I had the entire rest of my night last night and all day today to get some reading done. And I got some reading done, like I got a lot done. So let me start out with, I finished Small World by Tabitha King. This book was interesting. Uh, so, okay, I think I said before, it starts out with a drag queen art heist, but that's really the only drag queen kind of thing there is in this. Uh, that was literally just a disguise for this art heist. But this follows like multiple characters. So we have Roger, who is the one that stole the art. He created this invention that will shrink things. And he actually shrinks this piece of art and takes it. And then we have Dolly, or Dorothy Douglas, who is the person in this piece of art. She was the daughter of a president and she kind of grew up in the White House and stuff, but she's like crazy and I guess her father was like, he lost his presidency because he did some bad things and Dolly was given this uh, like replica White House dollhouse when she was a child and never really cared for it then, but now she's kind of like obsessed with it. And then it also follows Dolly's like daughter-in-law. Dolly's son married this girl named Lucy and Lucy is um, a miniaturist. So she creates like all the little mini things for this dollhouse. And her husband's passed away. So the only connection she really has to Dolly anymore is her grandchildren or Lucy's children, Dolly's grandchildren. Dolly really doesn't seem to care too much for the grandchildren, but she's obsessed with this dollhouse and getting Lucy to furnish it exactly the way she wants and all of that. And then you have Roger that comes and entices her with being able to shrink things. And then Dolly becomes obsessed or Dorothy becomes obsessed with, um, having dolls. Very, very realistic dolls for her dollhouse. And she's literally completely out of her mind. 
this is interesting. I give it mm, 3.75. Next, I finished listening to Frozen by Melissa De La Cruz and Michael Johnston. This follows a girl named Nat who, she's a blackjack dealer in New Vegas and the whole world is frozen over like sub-zero temperatures. Uh, life as we know it does not exist anymore. They speak or they write in textlish, uh, which is kind of like the way people text. There aren't really books, like people don't really read anymore. They don't create music. They don't have, like fresh water is super expensive. Food is expensive. Like most things are like created and Nat has always heard of this place called the blue where the sun still shines and it's warm and it's just paradise and she comes across this map that is supposedly leads to this illustrious blue and she hires uh, this group of runners to help her get to her goal and uh, the captain, his name's Wes, they both <laughs> are kind of um, playing each other for a while. He's trying to charm her into liking him so that he can steal some, you know, some things from her. And she's trying to charm him into liking her so that, well, he won't steal things from her pretty much and that, you know, he won't like sell her off to these slave ships and stuff. And of course, they end up falling for each other. But this is their journey trying to find the blue. I really enjoyed this. Again, I think I give this 3.75 and I'm looking forward to continuing the series. After I finished with that, I picked up Muslim Girl a Coming of Age by Imani Al... And I can't say this last name. And I looked it up like how it's pronounced and I still couldn't say it. I think my mouth just can't make that sound. But it's like Kahakba or something like that. And I'm sorry if I offended anybody by the way I said that. But I just can't say it right. But this follows a woman who... Well, it follows her from early childhood on where... When she was nine years old in elementary school was when 9-11 happened. And shortly after that, she heard her first racial slur against Muslims. And this is something that from that point forward, she grew up with as a big part of her life. And she was too different for the United States. But then when she went to Jordan, she was too American for there and she felt like she never really fit in and she was also a plus size girl and coming back to the United States after being over there um, it became even harder for her and in high school she created a website called Muslim Girl after trying to find out information for herself online and most of the information was either by non-muslim people or uh, just men and very few um, things actually were from women and so she wanted a woman's perspective on these things because there's so much that people don't necessarily know is a choice for them like like the hijab is not a requirement, it's a choice. Her mother doesn't wear a hijab, but she does. That was a choice that she made after being in Jordan. And there's several other things like um, about them, like having their hymens broken because not as a, it being forced upon them, but as a choice because a man isn't marked in any way showing when he's lost his virginity and they think it's nobody's business if you've done anything or not and so by doing that on their own they eliminate that factor and it's 
nobody's business how it was broken. This talks about racism, feminism, uh, Islamoph Islamophobia. There's so much and it's such a small book too to pack so much in it and I really really enjoyed this and I give it five stars. After I read that I decided I wanted to start something else but I didn't want to go into anything too big and so I picked up Back to the Future Tales from the Time Train. It's a graphic novel. It follows um, Doc Brown and his wife Clara and their two boys Jules and Vern and the adventures that they have uh, on this time train. So at the end of Back to the Future 3 the movie he stops and he sees Marty and Jennifer and they're going on an adventure but that's all you ever know from the movie and in this you get to see like where they go and they actually go to the 1939 New York's World's Fair or World Fair and um, yeah they, they run into some issues but it's a lot of fun and I give all of these five stars I really enjoy them and then I started listening to just a little bit of an audiobook when I went out so I started um, the only gift she had ever asked. Girl Serpent Thorn and this was my uh, scribd pick so I started that but I'm only like I'm just starting chapter four and then I also picked up Sleepy Hollow again I actually decided to DNF Sleepy Hollow because it was torture trying to get through the wording of that um, and then I read Rip Van Winkle. Yeah, it was okay. And so now I'm on page 43 of this. Though Rip Van Winkle went a whole lot faster and easier than Sleepy Hollow. So let's see what I've gotten accomplished this week as far as my newts goes. So overall this week I completed these eight books here. That's impressive. Wow. Okay, so A Simple Favor completed my A in Ancient Runes, which was Bethsheda Babylon, author's first or last name starts with a B. This was Darcy Bell. Then I completed The Other West Moore by West Moore, and this completed my A in Arithmacy, uh, Precision is Key, read a nonfiction. And then I read Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armentrout, and this didn't count for any of my newts. <laughs> and then I read Rage and Ruin, which completed my O in Potions, which was Girding Potion for Endurance, book over 450 pages, and this was 600 pages. Then I completed Small World by Tabitha King, and this did not complete any of my newts. And then I completed Frozen by Melissa De La Cruz and Michael Johnston. And this completed my E in Transfiguration. Draconophore spell, book with a dragon or fire in the title or the cover. And there is a little dragon right there. And there are dragons in the story. And then I completed Muslim Girl, A Coming of Age, which completed my E in Herbology, Nettle Plant, book that might be impactful and this very much was I did tear up at one point it was very very moving and then I completed back to the future tales from the time train and this completed my E in astronomy read a sci-fi so let's see how many I've completed all together so I've completed eight out of my 17 newts that I need to complete so not doing too bad. Let's see, I've also, out of my wheel, I've completed my Hoopla Wreck, which it was You Should See Me in a Crown. I did that last week. Roll the Dice with Small World. Face was Frozen. So I've completed three out of my ten from the wheel. So have you read any of these books? Did you like them? Did you not? Comment down below and let me know. Also, are you doing the Scallywagathon, which is coming next week? Let me know if you are. I will be sharing my TBR for that 
at the beginning of that vlog. So, tomorrow. Granted, I learned today that it actually started today, but I'm just going to do it all in next week. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!